Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. A rational expression is, in the world of algebra, basically a fraction that has algebra expressions in it. All right, let's kind of go back to the basics here for a second. And here's what I mean. Now, it's going to be adding or subtracting, but let's say we have just a simple one-half plus two-thirds. All right, so the very first thing you've got to do is you've got to find a common denominator. Now hopefully you remember the process that you look at each denominator, the 2 and the 3, and you try to find a number that is a multiple of 2 and 3. And of course the answer would be 6. All right. So we're going to rewrite each of these fractions with 6 in the denominator. Now we can't just copy the 1 and the 2 numerators over and put them over the 6, right? We have to rewrite the fraction. So what we have to do is we have to multiply the top and bottom of each of these fractions by what will give us 6 in the denominator. So in this case, we multiply the first fraction by 3 and 3, and the second fraction by 2 and 2. All right, as long as they're the same, because we want to really be multiplying by 1. So the next step is to rewrite each fraction. This is also known as making equivalent fractions. Okay, so in this case, 1 times 3 is 3. So we have the another name for um, 1 half is 3 sixths, and 2 times 2 is 4, so that would be 4 sixths, another name for 2 thirds. All right, next step. Now we're going to either add or subtract, and of course that would give us 7 over 6, okay, just simply following our operation. And the last step is to simplify what we've got. Now in this case, we'd get a mixed number one and one sixth, okay? The nice thing though with rational expressions, when we have fractions that have variables or variable expressions in them, we don't really have to worry about improper fractions. We would leave our answer, for example, seven over six, okay? We're gonna look at some examples in a minute. But this is a four step process. Find the common denominator, rewrite each fraction, making equivalent fractions. That's kind of the hardest step right there. And then we do the adding and subtracting, and then of course we simplify when we're done. All right, let's go ahead to our first problem set. All right, here we go. In this first problem set, this is the first video of the series, I'm gonna have you try these four problems. Now, if you think you know what to do, yes, please hit the pause button, write it out on paper, and then continue and see if you're right, okay? I'm gonna work the first one step by step, and you can try it now or you can watch me and then I do urge you to pause it and try the rest. Here we go. The first step is find the common denominator. So here's a little process I want you to go through with this. Look at the first denominator, 5x to the third, and let's go ahead and make a little list here. We are going to prime factor it. We're going to break it apart into its prime factors, break it all the way down into its smallest units. So that would be a 5 times an x times an x times an x. Then we're going to do the same with the other denominator, 2x to the third. Now this can be done in your head as soon as you understand the process. All right, this is 2 times x times x times x. So we're going to factor out the denominators. That's part of the finding the common denominator. Now here's the rule. We're going to find the largest group of each factor. The largest group of each factor means this. Let's start at the lowest number, 2. I see a single 2 there and no other 2's, so I'm going to circle it. That's the largest group of 2's. Then I have a 5. That's the largest group of 5's. There are no other 5's. Then I have 3x's here and 3x's here. Now if it's a tie, just circle one group and ignore the rest. Okay, you can even cross them out. So the largest group of 2's is a single 2. Largest group of 5 is a single 5. Largest group of X's is 3 X's. That's what I mean by circle the largest group of each factor. 
So when I put together everything that's circled here and multiply them together, I get 10x to the third. So my new denominator is going to be 10x to the third for each fraction. All right, now I have to, now I found the common denominator. Next step, rewrite the fractions. So we're gonna write equivalent fractions. So in other words, I have 5x to the third here in the first fraction and I'm going to change it into 10x to the third. My missing factor is the two. Notice on the list, I have 5x to the third and I still need the two, all right? So I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom here of the first fraction by two, or two over two for the whole thing. All right, so what's the missing factor here? Well, I have two x to the third and I'm missing a five factor out of my common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by five. All right, so determining what to multiply each fraction by is the key. We're rewriting the fractions. So on the top, I have four times two is eight. And on the top here, I have 25. No problem. Next. So the next step is add or subtract. In this case, eight minus 25. Now think about your integers. That should be a negative 17 over Remember, you just carry your common denominator with you, 10x to the third. All right, there's our final answer. All right, now you try. I'm gonna go a little faster. Remember to do these four steps. Find the common denominator, rewrite the fractions, then do the adding or subtracting, and then simplify when you're done. Good luck. Number two. We have a denominator of 6n and another one of 2m. So let's go ahead and break those apart. 6n is going to be 2 times 3 times n, right? Prime factors. 2m is going to be just 2 times m. Remember the rule to uh, find the common denominator, circle the largest group of each factor. Okay, well let's start with the twos. There's a single two there, a single two there. It doesn't matter which one I circle, but then I ignore the other one because there's only a single two involved. Then I have a three, and there's only one three on the list in either place, so I'll grab it and circle it. Then I have an N and then I have an M. So in this case, I just have a single n and an m okay so that's going to be six n m actually i should go alphabetical order six m n just to have proper form all right so if six n is a denominator of my first fraction i have to multiply that one by m and m right and if it's two m i have to multiply each of these by three n Okay, you have to keep track of what the missing factors are and multiply. All right, so let's rewrite those and keep going. So looking at the top here, I have 2m squared over my common denominator 6mn, and that would be 18n. Now I combine them all together, put them all on the same denominator, 6mn, and these are unlike terms, right? the variable parts don't match. So I basically just put them together in a list and there really is no way to simplify other than factoring out a two. Yeah, let's do that. Our last step is to simplify. So I'm gonna factor a two factor out of the top numerator. That'd be m squared plus nine n with a two on the outside and then 2 times, that would be 3mn. And yeah, there's kind of a shortcut. You can cancel it just by crossing it out. But my final answer is going to be m squared plus 9n over 3mn. Now, these answers look kind of crazy and ugly, but it's all about learning the rules of algebra and knowing how to manipulate and going through the process. All right. Let's look at three and four. I will give you a few seconds, you try it, and then I'll show the answer. All right, number three, the five and the four y combine to make 20 y as my common denominator, 20 y. All right, which means 
that I have to multiply this 5 by 4y on the bottom. And you can write it with parentheses that way. And this 4y needs to be multiplied by a 5 on top and bottom. All right, looking for the missing factors of your denominator. So in doing so, I have 12y on the top of this and 10x. Now that's going to give me 12y, or let's put the x in, in first, 10x plus 12y over 20y. And let's look at my final answer. Can you tell me why this is the final answer? That's right, I'm gonna factor a two out of each part and be able to reduce further. So there's my simplified answer. Now number four to finish up, what's my common denominator? It's gonna be six X, right? So I'm gonna put six X on the bottom of each fraction and we are adding them. And that means I'm missing a three Try to squeeze that in there. And I'm missing a 2x. Or excuse me, I'm just missing an x factor right there. Okay, I have to rewrite these fractions. All right, so that would give me 9x and 4xy. Well, wait a sec, how did we get this answer? Ah, because when we combine these together, we're going to get 9x plus 4xy all over the common denominator of 6x. And, you know, with some of these, the, the simplification becomes a little tricky. You just have to kind of be able to factor and figure out what's going on. There's a common factor of x in each, isn't there? So that would be a 9 plus 4y multiplied by the x factor. I have an x factor here, which leaves the six, and then of course we cancel the x's out, and that's why my answer is as shown. All right, now we're gonna get into some more complicated examples. This was problem set number one. Thanks for watching. Now look for, under the same title, how to add or subtract rational expressions, problem set two. All right, good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.